Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to demonstrate how to use arrays using C++. Now the concept of arrays applies to a lot of other programming languages, but the language that I'm focusing on with this is C++. So first of all, what is an array? You may be used to using a simple variable. They're also called scalar variables, and they are individual variables. And they're not related to any other variable in memory. And that allows you to store one value at a time. And sometimes when you have variables that are related to each other, it can be easier and more efficient to treat them as a group. And when you have a group of related variables that are the same data type, we refer to that as an array. So in addition to having data that is similar being bundled together in an array, it's also beneficial because it increases the efficiency of a program because data can be accessed easily from internal memory faster. Once we've created an array, we can access the variables in an array and use them a lot like other variables. So let's get started and I'm going to create a simple array and I'm going to show you a couple of different techniques for doing that. So just like when you're creating a variable of a scalar type or a single type, we have to specify the type of data that's going to be contained in the array. So I'm going to create an array of strings, and these are going to be for the Brady kids. If you remember that show from the 70s, the Brady Bunch. All right, we create an array called Brady, and the type of information that's going to be stored in it is going to be a list of strings. And I'm going to specify that it's going to have six values. Now this can be left empty, and it will automatically identify how many elements are in the array based on what it ends up being populated with. But since I know that there are six Brady kids, that's what I'm going to put in. And now I can populate the array by specifying what those string values are. So I can say Brady, and then we use square brackets with an index value. So the number that's inside here is an index value and it counts and keeps track of the index value for each element in the array. So the first one I'm going to set equal to Greg and then I'm going to repeat this for each of the other kids and the only thing I'm going to do is change the index number and the name of the person. So then we'll have Marsha, Peter, Bobby, and then Cindy. So this creates an array of Brady with six values. They're all of the string type, so that's one thing. These all need to be the same type of data. And we can distinguish one from another by its index value. So this is one way of creating an array. Now in a second, I'll show you a second way of doing basically the same thing. So what if I wanted to access and print out something from the array? I can do a cout statement, and you might be tempted to just output Brady, the name of the array. So let's try that and see what we get. So when I run this, okay, what I'm actually getting here is its location and memory not a listing of the Brady kids. So let's revise this. Instead of just saying Brady, if I wanted to access an individual value from the array, I can use the index value and say if I wanted to get Jan, then I would use index three because that's what she is assigned to. So now if I run it, then it should just output Jan right down here. Now if I wanted to print out all of the values from this array, then what we do is we use a looping structure. So what I'll do is add in here, we'll say um, loop through array and print values. So we'll use a for loop and we'll say an int, we'll 
set i equal to zero. Our condition is we'll start out with i less than, we know there are six values in here, so we'll say i less than six. And each time it loops through, we're going to increment the value of i. We're starting at zero, so we want it to increment so that it gets to one, then two, then three, then finally up to six. And then for my statements, I want it to do a C out, so I'm just going to move this up here. And instead of putting in an exact index value, I'm going to replace that with the value of i. So as it goes through here, right, i is going to be 0 when it comes through the first time, and then it's going to increment, and then i will become 1, and then 2, over and over again until this becomes false. So now let me run this. Oh, got a little extra semicolon in there. Now let's run it. And then we have um, our array of Brady's output. Now, as I said, this was one way of creating an array. And it's kind of like the long way around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment this out. And let me show you another way of creating an array. So we still say what data type it is. So all of our values are going to be strings. And I'm still going to use the name Brady. And I'm going to still say that there are going to be six elements in my array. But now I'm going to set this equal to, and I'm going to put in an opening and closing curly brace. And then in here, I'm going to put in my strings. Now I did press enter to put this down onto another line so that it didn't string all the way across the screen, but you could have it keep continue going. So this creates the same array that we did up here. Now what happens is if we don't specify an index value like we did here, then this first element is automatically assigned the index of 0, and this is 1, and this is 2. So the array starts counting at zero automatically. Now you can offset that by creating the array this way, and this could be one, and then two, and then three, and so forth. And I could make that one 55 if I wanted to, 555, and then all the values in between would be blank. So we can specifically assign an index value or we can have it automatically create one if we use this format. But we still access them the same way. So we would still say Brady, and then inside the square brackets, the value of the index number that we want to access. So now if I run this, we should get the same result. So now let's look at a way of working with this a little bit more dynamically. So rather than having our index value set as an exact value here, and then when we loop through it, we're using it again, this is a good place where we can introduce using a constant in order to maintain our array size. So I can say constant int, it's going to be an integer, and I'm going to say array size, and I'm going to set that value equal to the number of elements in my array. So then, rather than saying the value here to be exactly 6, I'll just make that array size. So then this will be filled in with whatever this value is. And then when we're looping through, same thing, I can say array size there. So then when I run it, we should get the same result. But now we've set it up so that if we decide to add more or change more in here, we can come up here and just change the value one place and have it updated everywhere it would be using that value. So that's an overview of how to create and initialize arrays and also how to access and display values from an array.